We're going to work another subspace example problem. This is number three. In this problem, we're going to be working with a set of vectors in R2. The set of vectors we're going to denote as U, and U consists of all the two-dimensional vectors of the form xy such that x, the first dimension, is greater than 1. So as the first part of this problem, let's just sketch what this set of points looks like in the 2D plane. So we need to sketch all the points of the form xy that satisfy the inequality x being greater than 1. So here on the x-axis is the point 1, and we need to only fill in the points where x is greater than 1, so that's everything to the right of this line. There is no constraint on y, the second coordinate, so y can be any value up and down the vertical axis, but the first coordinate along the x-axis has to be greater than 1, so the set U really consists of everything to the right of that dotted line that I've kind of shaded in here. So there's a lot of points in the set U, but they all lie to the right of this line. The next question we have is, is the set U a subspace of R2? So we know that R2 with normal vector addition and normal scalar multiplication is a vector space. U is obviously a subset of R2, because for every x that we have in u, x is in R2. So u is definitely a subset of R2, but is u a subspace of R2? To be a subspace, there's three things that we need to check. So given that we're already working with a subset of the vector space R2, to establish that u is a subspace, we just need to check three things. The first thing we need to check is we need to make sure that there's a zero element present in U. We need to make sure that this set is closed under addition, vector addition, and it also needs to be closed under scalar multiplication. So if you're working with a collection of vectors and those vectors are a subset of a vector space, the three things that you need to check to see if the subset is actually a subspace are these three things. So let's actually work through some of these to see if we can determine if U is actually a subspace or not. So the first one, is there a zero element present in the subset U? For this particular example, what that means is we need to see if the zero, zero vector is in U. Because remember what the zero element is. This is the element that you can add to any vector in your collection of vectors and get back the vector you started with. So adding the zero vector doesn't change the vector that you added it to. So for the problem we're working here, that obviously means that the zero element has to be the vector zero, zero. Because if I add zero, zero to any element in U, I get back the element in U that I started with. Nothing changes. Well, from the sketch that we just made, it's pretty clear that the point zero, zero is not in U. Remember, we only had the points shaded in that were to the right of the line x equals 1. So the origin at point 0, 0 was not in that shaded region, so the 0 element is not in U. And because of that, that means that U cannot be a subspace. So if we wanted to stop the problem right now and declare that U is not a subspace of R2, then we could just be done. But let's go ahead and look at um, the third property as well, just to see a little bit more here. The third property, we would like this to be closed under scalar multiplication if we're hoping that U is a subspace of R2. If it is a subspace, then 3 has to hold for all vectors in U and for all constants in U. We can show that this property number 3 doesn't hold by just picking one example. So let's pick the point 2, 2. So this point is definitely in the set U, because it's in that shaded region that we sketched. And let's pick the constant C equals negative 1. So let's go ahead and do the scalar multiplication. Let's take C times the vector 2, 2, which is obviously equal to a negative 2, a negative 2. This point, a negative 2, a negative 2, is not in the set U. This point is on the left side of the plot. It's definitely not in that set U. So with this one specific example, we've shown that the set U is not closed under scalar multiplication. We picked a point that was in U. We picked some arbitrary constant C, and after performing scalar multiplication, we ended up with a point or a vector that was not 
in the set U. So it ended up outside the set. So this means that it is not closed under scalar multiplication, and for that reason, the third property fails, and U is not a subspace. So either one of these would be sufficient to show we didn't have to do both of these, just one of these being not true. So this one being failing to have a zero element present, this one failing to have the space being closed under scalar multiplication, either of these shows that U is not a subspace.